everyone. Thanks for dropping by and welcome to my studio slash office. If we haven't met yet, my name is Tyler Edwards. I am a full-time freelance filmmaker and YouTube content creator. And as a result, I spend a lot of time down in this office, whether I'm editing client work or filming and or editing YouTube videos. Now for a while, this room here was just kind of a boring room with kind of off white walls and it really wasn't all that inspiring or cozy or anything like that. But since I spend so much time down in this office, whether I'm editing or filming or whatever the case may be, I wanted to build something out that was just a little bit more inviting, a little bit cozier and somewhere where I didn't mind spending eight or 10 or even 12 or 14 hours out of my day. So I set out to do just that. And I really think I've kind of accomplished that with this office. So I wanted to kind of show you around now that I'm pretty much done with it. I'm sure things are gonna change, but I figured I'd kind of show you around and kind of what I'd done with it. And, and maybe it can inspire you to, to kind of help with your office build if you're doing that. So that said, let's go ahead and jump into it and let's start with my desk. Now this desk is a bit of a custom build. The base is a sit stand base that my wife and I bought from a company that she used to work at when they were kind of cleaning a house. It had a standard top to it, which was okay, but it wasn't wide enough for my needs. So to fix that, I bought this Life Edge Acacia countertop from Home Depot. And I really like the live edge and it gives a nice aesthetic. And when I was building it out, I didn't really want a butcher block top. So I'm really happy with how it turned out. And to complement the desk, I got this desk shelf off Amazon that is also acacia to match the wood of the desk. It's a nice accent. And right now it is a perfect spot for my laptop to sit on and for my MagSafe charger. And then there's some hardware below that is a little tucked away and out of eyesight. Speaking of my laptop, I am using a 2021 M1 Max MacBook Pro that is fully spec'd out up for the storage, which is four terabytes. And although it stays closed when hooked up to the hub, the Thunderbolt ports and SD card slot and everything work, which is awesome. Now, as for the hardware that's under the desk shelf, I have a Thunderbolt 3 hub, which has a display port on the back for my monitor, connection from my laptop, which also charges the laptop, USB type A, which is for my audio interface, a Thunderbolt port on the back for connecting my hard drives, and two USB ports on the front for extra connections. Next to that is my Focusrite audio interface. This is the first gen unit although it has served me really well it needs to be replaced soon due to some latency issues that i have been running into with my setup the preamps are great and they do a great job sending a balanced signal to my reference monitors but i do plan to upgrade this at some point in the future now as for my reference monitors i'm using jbl lsr 305s they're pretty bulky but they sound really good in fact, one of the main reasons why I needed such a wide desk was for my reference monitors. Since I use my desk sitting and standing, I, I wanted to make sure that my monitors were always at the same height in relation to my position for consistent monitoring. That eliminates the option for floor stands. So I opted for these stands that I got off Amazon that just kind of clamp on the back of the desk. And I have them so that the tweeters are at ear level and oriented for the best sound. And although they're not very aesthetic, they are very functional and practical for what they do. They are intended for work, not for Instagram photos. They are my main source of referencing audio and everything for when I'm EQing and, and mastering and all that kind of good stuff. So they are very critical to my setup. But to add a little visual appeal, I put an Aperture MC under each stand, which I think is a nice little touch. Additionally, I have the Apple AirPod Max for over the ear monitoring or for editing on the go. I really like them because they are wireless. They seamlessly integrate to my Apple ecosystem. And although they are not pro music producer quality reference headphones, they sound great. And the content I create for both client and YouTube, honestly, is not really being consumed on professional audio equipment or anything like that. So these are a great consumer quality headphone that let me know how the content will sound to the general public. And I also have this little Thunderbolt to three and a half millimeter jack to run directly into the computer to eliminate latency, which is really nice. Now for my viewing monitor, I am using using a 4K 32 inch BenQ monitor that I purchased in like 2016 or something like that. And after calibration, this monitor still looks really good. And I grade with scopes and always watch my content on multiple devices prior to sending off to clients to make sure that it looks good on all those devices. But that said, it is getting pretty old and I am looking to replace it. So I've got my eye on a couple of options. Now you may be wondering why I don't use my MacBook as a 
second monitor for, for monitoring. And the reason being is because I plan on adding a, a Mac Studio to my setup. So I'm kind of experimenting just with using this single monitor to kind of see how I like it. And it kind of looks just a little bit more clean and less distracting. So, so far I really like it, but they may change in the future. Now for my keyboard, I went with the Apple Magic Keyboard. I love the simplistic design and it's wireless and it has Touch ID. The only wish I had for this keyboard is that I wish that the keys were illuminated. Now under the keyboard is a desk mat that I got off Amazon. It's really well made and grippy on the bottom so it doesn't slide all around and add some nice contrast to the desk. It also came with this leather mouse pad which sits below the Logitech MX Master which I believe is the version one. It's a great mouse, not all the functions work on it now that it's so old but it still has some customizable buttons that I really like. Now moving on to the left hand side of the desk I have some G drives. The two on the bottom are RAID setups for redundancy and then for some additional redundancy I have two other hard drives on top but honestly I really just need to invest in a, a bigger uh, direct storage system. I don't think I really need a NAS at this point but I do plan on investing in that this year so I'll keep you updated on that as well. Now on the back of the desk I have some Amaran SM5C strips. One one for the desk and one for my monitor. Because my walls are painted in this kind of charcoal slate gray, these lights really help with eye strain and add some visual interest. And I love that they're sighted link compatible as my whole studio is on Aperture and Amaran lights. But frankly, the SM5Cs kind of leave a lot to be desired. I really wish they would have been at least RGBW or RGBWW for better color accuracy. But using an HSI mode, I feel like I was able to get them to match my MCs at 6500 Kelvin. And while we're at the back of the desk, we can take a look at the cable management, which is pretty terrible, but all the cables are tucked away. It's just kind of looks like a bird's nest down there. But I've used a lot of these little 3M clips and stuff like that just to kind of keep things at least tucked up under there nice and neatly but uh it still kind of looks like a bird nest but i honestly just don't have the time to to dedicate to cable management stuff so works for my needs but it definitely could be better as for my chair, I'm using a Herman Miller Mira 2. And honestly, this is probably one of the best investments that you can make if you work at a computer for long periods of time. Now, before I got this chair, I used to literally edit on this squeaky old drum stool. And honestly, I don't even know why I have a drum stool. I, I don't even play drums, but somehow I acquired this somewhere down the road. And uh, that's what I used to edit on. And I still use it now for, you know, when I'm filming my YouTube videos, but I'm not sitting at the YouTube chair for hours and hours upon end. So I'm super stoked that I have this Herman Miller chair. Uh, it's definitely made my life a lot better and I feel way less fatigued at the end of the day. So that's it for the desk. Now we can kind of move on to the studio, if you will. So in the middle of the room is where I primarily film my talking head pieces for YouTube videos. I use this table quite a bit for product reviews and product demonstrations, but it also can serve as like a, a fake desk, if you will, if I'm you know doing a tutorial on my laptop or something like that. The table itself is just some table off Amazon, and I use some leftover wood and stain from the countertop that I built in the back to create a tabletop that matched. Then I have an iPad if I'm using it for notes to reference while I'm talking, and the other side is a monitor for my overhead cam when I use it. Now to light myself, I'm using the Aperture 300D Mark II with the light dome and grid attached to it for my key light. And although I typically keep it at about 30 to 40% for filming my, my talking head pieces, I also use it to film product B-roll as well. So that extra output really helps if I'm at a higher frame rate. Now to minimize the need for having a bunch of light stands in the studio, I've actually mounted this light to a wall using a little right angle baby pin to wall plate adapter. And it just kind of screws into the wall. And this is really cool because so I can kind of swivel the light around to get it out of the way or move it if I want to film a different scene or something like that. I have another one of those baby pin to plate adapters on the ceiling and that's where I mount my boom mic, the Rode NTG5. When I'm ready to film, I just plug in the XLR to the sound recorder. And then I also have a little ball head attached to that contraption as well so that I can mount a camera for overhead shots if I need that. Now my A camera changes quite frequently, but lately I've been using my red Komodo with the Canon RF to 15 to 35 as my main cam and to monitor I actually use my computer monitor and use this Hollyland Cosmos C1 to be able to wirelessly monitor my feed and my overhead cam has been another Komodo with the 16 millimeter prime it's a bit overkill but honestly I really like how it looks and I just usually just delete all the footage after I post a YouTube video anyways so it doesn't really take up any hard drive space and to record my audio I'm using the sound devices mix pre 3 2 moving to the back of the room I built the storage solution with some IKEA cabinets and 
and then just built this custom countertop on top with some plywood and stain. It's great to keep gear stored and out of sight, and I also use this as a spot for a charging station. I love the contrast of the cabinets and the top, and honestly, if this wasn't an office, it would still be very functional for a bedroom or something like that. On the countertop, I just have some items that has props for my YouTube set, but I also use these items quite frequently for client work. And the lights behind those props are Amaran T4Cs. Now on the left side of the room walking in, I have two paper backdrops that I use as either another set or for filming product B-roll. On the other side of this room, I have the shelf that I got off Amazon and I use that to just hold lenses. Next to that, a bottle of Blanton's that I'll pour as a little cheers for a big milestone or event. And below that, I have some items from some client work, like the first magazine that I shot photos for and some other items from other clients. And then finally, this Peak Design tripod that I use all the time. And last but not least, I have this little dresser thing that my wife purchased and I just use this to hold random cables and other SSDs and stuff. Honestly, it's a disaster, a total mess, so I'm not gonna even show you what's inside those drawers. But um, that's pretty much it. That's gonna wrap it up. Um, I know this was a pretty long video, but a lot to cover. So I appreciate you watching. I hope you found this somewhat entertaining or something like that. Um, I had a lot of fun building this out, and as I make improvements to this, then I will uh, certainly share that in an upcoming video if that's something that you would like to see. Well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.